Hi guys, it's Benny from TRX Space Station. How's everyone doing? Time for a bit of a talky video as it's Friday night. I've had a really, really busy couple of weeks actually. Um, work has been so, so busy. So I thought I might treat myself to a bit of a beverage. I'm quite partial to trying random beers that I come across that I think look interesting. Um, excuse the hat, it's freezing. It's really wintry. Um, so I went for, this sounded really interesting, limited edition canopy beer Hoots and Shoots Slow Porter. Basically, it's a porter, a dark beer, but with slow berries added. Like, some of you might be familiar with slow gin. Um, so, yeah, that's gonna be my tipple this evening while I ramble on. Look at this expert beer pouring. The trick is, you gotta tilt the glass. If you don't tilt the glass, then what happens is you get all the foam going everywhere and it ends up all knackered. Oh, it's very interesting looking. Look at that, it's dark as sin. Let's have a quick sample. Oh, mmm, very, I think your is they're deliciously sort of tart and bitter. But they also go down very smoothly. I don't know if you guys are ever gonna come across this because I found it in a little beer shop in London, in Streatham. Um, but yeah, there we are. So, first up, I wanna say a big thank you. And the thank you is to Pete on a retro tip because he uh, recently did a 10 YouTubers who are under a thousand subs video. And uh, I was really, really thankful because he gave me a shout out and a load of people subscribed to my channel. I woke up uh, the other day and I was like, whoa, what's going on? Why are so many people subbing? And then I realized it's because Pete gave me a shout out. So thank you so much for that, Pete. You're an absolute legend. Uh, so kind of you to give back to the community like that. And welcome to everybody who's subscribed because I, you know, I really, really appreciate it. It's so much fun getting to know new people, uh, seeing some new faces around here. And yeah, I really appreciate it, guys. So I'll drink to that. Now, I've been watching uh, a guy called uh, Dr. Josh, the real gamer, for quite a while now. And uh, we kind of, you know, we're friends, we get talk, we got talking quite a bit. And uh, he recently did a video, um, basically, which was talking about five games that he grew up with. And I've seen a few uh, video responses knocking around. And I thought, actually, this would be a really nice one to um, do a VR of my own to. Maybe I've spoken about some of these games before, I'm not sure, but to be honest, I don't think you can speak about games that you love enough. And um, I just thought, you know what, I'll go for it. I have maybe tried to pick stuff that I haven't gone on about endlessly before, but ah, who cares? I think it'd be cool if you guys did a video response to um, his video and I'll leave a, a, link to the, a link to the description, link in the description below, so you can go and check out the original video and have a look at some of the uh, video responses. Because um, I always find it really nice being nostalgic and going back and remembering how stuff used to be back in the glory days before all this life and crap got in the way. By the way, notice the fairy lights, yeah? Because I'm feeling festive. I don't give a crap if it's just November, I'm feeling festive, all right? Don't piss on my parade. I get super excited about Christmas really early, guys. Partly because my mum requests Christmas lists really early so she can go and buy loads of stuff. Um, God, I feel excited already. Anyway, in no particular order, I'm gonna talk about some games that I grew up with. Firstly, is River Raid. And this is my original River Raid cartridge. And when I say mine, I mean my parents, actually, because they had this before I was probably even born. Um, and the, uh, the cart is looking a little bit worse for wear, but it's still got the sticker on there. Um, there's always gonna be a soft spot in my heart for the Atari 2600. Um, it's not the best system graphically, but it is, there's something really nostalgic about it. The way it sounds, the way it looks, the way it plays, the way the joysticks feel. And River Raid will always remind me of my sort of first console gaming experiences. As uh, my parents had a Atari 2600 when I was very young. And it was probably, yeah, it was definitely, not probably, the first video game console that I ever played. And 
River Raid would, would definitely have been the first shoot 'em up, vertical scrolling shoot 'em up that I ever played. And it was fun because it was one that me and my brother and my dad would like to play together. And um, I don't think there's any way to beat the game actually, it just rolls on forever. But uh, we were taking in turns trying to compete with each other to get a better score. And that was really fun. And think just, just hearing the game, seeing the game takes me back to being a kid. Takes me back to that first kind of curiosity about what video games were all about and whether I, they were something I wanted to get into. And um, even my granddad played this with us once. That's probably the only time I can ever remember my granddad playing a video game. Um, I still have a blast on this every now and then. Um, I do still think it's a really good game. And the thing with the Atari 2600 is it's, it's proof of the concept that gameplay is paramount. And because of the limitations of the hardware and the size of these carts, people had to really focus on gameplay. And there are some cracking games on the system. Um, and River Raid would probably be, it's in my top five favorite Atari 2600 games. No doubt about that. Okay, in no particular order. Um, it's funny, I've kept a very small number of my original PS1 games. Um, but Grand Theft Auto is one that I've held on to ever since I was in high school. Um, it's not even the Platinum, Platinum Edition, it's actually the original edition. And it's in pretty good nick. It's uh, still got the instruction manual in there. I've still got the maps, which showed you where all the garages were and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, I do remember when this game first came out. I remember how excited I was that you could play a game and squash people and commit crimes and me and my brother were like we can never let mum and dad know that we're playing this because we're going to get in so much goddamn trouble and uh, I've pretty much been obsessed with the series ever since although I never really got into Grand Theft Auto 2 I, I played GTA London and loved it played this one and loved it not so much too the thing with this one is that it's actually very very difficult you you've got to get like is it a million I think it was a million dollars to get through the first level and then it goes up and up from there. And, you know, up to crazy, crazy extents where, you know, for the later levels, you really do have to play quite a lot and do a lot of missions to score enough points. Um, I think I only ever got to see the later stages on it because um, I knew the cheats. I think if I was playing it legitimately, I managed to get like maybe to the Definitely to the second level. No, definitely to the second area, but I'm not just not so sure how much further I got. Um, but what can I say? It was a game that um, I had it on the PC, like pirated, but I requested it for my birthday, uh, and I must have been at high school. I don't remember how old I was. I definitely wasn't 18. Um, and my mum got it me, and I, I played it to death, and I loved playing it with my friends that come round, and we'd watch each other destroying things. And it was that first sense of proper freedom in a game. It was that sense of, I can go and destroy anything and often you just go off and not do the missions and just kill people and blow stuff up and, you know, that was the start of that real video games as an experience, as an adventure, as something that you yourself can control and have a stake in and just dictate and have fun with and uh, it will always have a soft spot in my heart. Um, Probably not as big a soft spot as GTA 3 did, because when that came out on the PS2, that was just revolutionary. It was that, oh my god, I can literally have an open world and do whatever the hell I want. I can go wherever the hell I want. And, you know, that was the basis for all of the modern GTA games that we play now, GTA 3. It, it, was, it was an extra step up, and it was a seriously good game. And it's probably still one of my favourites now because of the nostalgia factor. Although probably, you know, San Andreas would be a better game overall in terms of the size of the map and all the stuff you could do. But there's something about GTA 3 that just mesmerizes me. Anyway, I don't know why I'm waffling about that because I've chosen Grand Theft Auto here, which pretty much all these games that I've chosen are from really, really way back, like high school way back. Yeah, they're all high school or earlier, not anything later than that. Okay. Gotta have a Sega Genesis game in here. Why am I saying Genesis when I mean Mega Drive? And I've picked a very interesting cartridge, which I'm throwing up and down for no particular reason. Micro Machines 2 Turbo Tournament. And, ooh, got quite a lot of dust on it. That's what I'm gonna start sneezing in a minute. Um, how cool was it that they added 
two controller ports in the cartridges. You know, screw you guys with your multi-taps for the PlayStation 1 that you had to pay loads of money to get. Because in the day of the Mega Drive, people managed to fit it onto the cartridge. And Micro Machines 2 Turbo Tournament is probably one of the best multiplayer games on the Sega Mega Drive. Right. God, that beer's really working its way through. Burp. Can I edit these burps out? Probably not. Let's just roll with it. I'm really sorry about all the burps. I would sit with all my friends and play it for hours, and I can still play this game with the lads today. If we get together and play it, I always laugh. I always have a good time. I never get bored of it. It's just, it's just too good. It's too good to not laugh. Um, especially the level with the um, little sponge where everyone's got to try and ram onto it, and if someone <laughs> doesn't make it, they get left behind, and you can barge each other off, and you know. It's just good, honest fun, and I miss four-player, multiplayer games, you know? And there are some out these days, you know, like Overcooked and stuff, but I I miss those four-player races because my Micro Machines 2, tor 2 Turbo Tournament, put my teeth in, it's just class. I, I don't know what else to say other than that it's class, and I just loved it, and I, I you know, if you ever want to play it, come round, we'll play it. It's, it's always a good laugh. I don't really know what else to say about it other than just it's it's incredible. Um, I'm sure you guys all know that. Now here's a real old game that I've had for a very long time. It's Tomb Raider 2 for the PC. Another one that's gone with me across all these years. Still got all the discs, still got all the instruction booklets. I took great care of this one. And it was a game I got for my, I think I got it for Christmas actually. I hadn't really played Tomb Raider 1, um, but when I got this, 1997 it looks like it came out, um, you know, I was blown away by it. Again, it was that freedom, the 3D exploration, and the awesomeness of locking the butler in the ice cupboard. Ice cupboard, that's what it was called. The hell is that thing called? The freezer, the big freezer thing. Um, and it was, it had a good story. Lara Croft was amazing. The graphics at the time were incredible. It felt really badass. I just loved it. And what can I say? I just loved it. Um, and, you know, I didn't actually get into that many of the Tomb Raiders after this one. I did buy them. I had Tomb Raider 3 and stuff. This one was always the, the definitive one for me. Even though I have played Tomb Raider 1 since and quite enjoyed it. Um, I, I just fell in love with Lara after this. What an awesome character she was. And it was great that, you know, on the self-titled uh, Tomb Raider on the Xbox, um, she was really fleshed out as a character. You know, I loved her anyway. I loved her all the way from here. But I think like we get we got to know her a lot more recently, thanks to Rihanna Pratchett um, and her amazing um, sort of fleshing out of the, of the character. Um, but it's funny how there are some games that go with you through all of your journeys in life, and some that you sold and bought again, like my Mega Drive collection is all rebought, not the original stuff. But Grand Theft Auto and Tomb Raider. These lasted the whole hog. They've gone all the way through since I was probably 10 or 11 or something like that. No, maybe a bit older than that because high school's from 11 onwards, isn't it? Anyway, yeah, they've gone with me forever. Now, you guys will know that I'm a big fan of point and click adventures. Um, some of the earliest games I ever got into were point and click adventures. And the LucasArts ones in particular were just incredible and this isn't again this isn't my back in the day copy this is actually sealed and unopened I found this at a charity shop it's Sam and Max hit the road um, I could have picked any of these games I've still got Day of the Tentacle my original disc um, but I love playing these games I love playing the dig the dig was really really good uh, Day of the Tentacle uh, what are the ones that I play Monkey Island all of that good stuff uh, but Sam and Max was one of my favourites because it was just the craziness of the characters, the kind of contrast between the two of them, um, the silliness, the wackiness. Um, but don't be fooled by it, it is a mercilessly difficult game. And, oh, I knew all that dust would make my nose go tickly. Um, never even beat it, actually, because they're just bloody difficult. But it actually um, in, ugh, it introduced a bit of sort of 3D stuff as well. It had some uh, rendered 3D bits. I thought the voice acting was great, the characters are just hilarious. Some of the um, level design is superb. I always envied LucasArts for their pixel art and I wish that I could 
one day have learned how to um, how to make art as good as they did because man those games they never to me they never age because you know in the, in the way that some of the early um, PS1 games early 3D games don't look so good these days I think that pixel art always looks good it's it's hand drawn essentially it doesn't really go out of date um, full throttle forgot to mention that and of course a few of these games have been re-released in HD and all that stuff burp didn't come that time see I'm learning I sort of managed to stave that one off <clears throat> nope 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 spoke too soon but Sam and Max I don't believe has ever had it has had like the episodic modern ones that were released on something but it hasn't had a full HD re relicking yeah that's what it is reimagining remastering Um, maybe it's about time it did, because Full Throttle got one. If Full Throttle got one, and Day of the Tentacle got one, why can Sam and Max not get one? Come on, guys. How about you know? Think about it. Think about doing it. Program it. Make it. Make it happen. I'll buy it. I'm at least one person. Sorted. Right. I'm rambling. Next thing. I've already spoken a bit about the um, PlayStation Classic Mini. Well. We've got the list of the 20 games. Oh my god, why is my laptop so bright? You guys can find the list of the games. Um, and let me just say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the games that I'm glad are on here. That I'm looking forward to playing. Um, as I go through the list. Destruction Derby, yes. Loved that game. Final Fantasy VII, it had to be on there. Grand Theft Auto, yeah, okay, I've already got it, but you know, go for it. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, thank god, I'm so glad they put that on there. One of my favourite PS1 games of all time. Absolutely love it. Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, yes, another game that I loved. Resident Evil Director's Cut, yes, amazing. Uh, you know, a game that I know of, I watched my cousin play loads, but I actually would like the chance to go back and play it my, myself. Ridge Raider Type 4, yes, brilliant. Tekken 3, brilliant. And Wild Arms, totally happy about playing some cool RPGs. But... I kind of feel like there are a lot of really good games that should have been on here. Where are your um, Crash Bandicoots or Spyro or Croc? You know, I'm not fussy which one you pick, but pick one of those um, interesting 3D explorey games because they were a big part of that console's lifespan. They were a massive part of the games that we were playing back then. And I know that we've had Crash Bandicoot re-release and the Spyro re-release um, but that's not a reason as far as I'm concerned to just not put them on there you know they're, they're still a massive part of that library and yeah I would have liked to see them on there I would have preferred to see some of the other Final Fantasies in place of well you could pick a lot of games on here that are really average um, why not put Final Fantasy VIII on there or nine? You know, have two Final Fantasies because those again were a huge part of why we played the system. Um, and I just think there's, there's a lot of really meh games on here that many people will not have heard of. Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash was a really average game. Mr. Driller. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of questionable stuff on here and the classics that I loved back in the day and played loads of. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider should be on there. Why is Tomb Raider not on there? That's like a no-brainer. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater has to be on there. That was one of the best video games of all time. An incredible video game. Um, I just don't, I don't know, the list has just, it's got a weird number of odd meh titles on it and some really big, amazing titles that we would like to see just omitted. I'm still excited about it, I still want it. There's still loads of stuff on here that I'm gonna play. I just wish that some of the more classic games that all of us will have played were on there. Um, and I'm just hoping that we get, uh, we get a chance to hack it. Oh, that nose, so itchy. I hope we get a chance to hack it because um, there's a lot of stuff that I want to put on there that's missing. Um, Tenchu, Tenchu would have been cool as well. You know, that was a innovative, cool, violent, bloody, amazing game. So let me know what you guys think of the uh, 20 games that have been released. 
Let me know about five games that you grew up with. I will look forward to seeing your video responses. Please post them in the comments below if you do them. I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my tipple and obviously watch loads of Making a Murderer season two on Netflix because what else am I gonna do on a Friday night? I've got no life. So I guess I could go play a little bit of River Raid and try and beat my old high score. Not easy game, but awesome. All right, take care guys. I'll speak to you all soon. Have a good weekend and I'm off to drink some beer. Bye.